He would start the day with coffee, which he prepared himself after meticulously counting out 60 beans per cup, and by counting them, one by one for the perfect dose. In the afternoon, he would compose his music. In the evenings, he would drink wine and enjoy a leisurely dinner, and afterwards would go for a long, vigorous walk, all the while carrying sheets of music paper and something to write with. Afterwards, he'd stop at a tavern to read the news, and then again have another simple meal followed by some beer and a pipe. Then he'd sleep and repeat it all over again. Doesn't sound too special? This is one of the daily rituals of one of the most brilliant composers in human history, Beethoven. Mason Curry talks a lot about how many of the biggest names in the history of creativity have similar daily routines in his book, Daily Rituals, How Artists Work. For example, he talks about how Victor Hugo would wake daily from a gunshot by the nearby fort, have coffee, and have two raw eggs before having his public ice bath on the roof. Balzac, the famous French writer, would write in manic episodes, fueled by as many as 50 cups of black coffee a day. Sigmund Freud would see patients in the morning while smoking as many as 20 cigars each day, and then go for a power walk around Vienna in the afternoon, something that a surprisingly large amount of creatives do. Charles Dickens would write in his personal study in perfect quiet before taking his long, brisk walk through London or the surrounding countryside. And Benjamin Franklin would take time each day in the morning to figure out his own resolution for the day, plan the coming day, work, and then in the evenings reflect on his daily virtues and values. What good have I done today? It wasn't until I began searching for how the best master each day that I finally stumbled upon one of the biggest success principles on the planet. Monday can roll around, and we're fired up and excited to begin. We start making a homemade breakfast, we take that time to walk for 10 minutes, we go to bed a few minutes early, and then we celebrate our victory. That was easy. The week progresses, and the most deadly day of the week arrives, Friday. It's a friend's birthday, and everyone wants to go out to get drinks, and there's loads of pizza and beer. You're doing a great job dodging the minefield of junk food, but peer pressure Pamela chimes in and says, I'll live a little, and guilt trips you into eating something crappy. And then it's all downhill. You binge on everything around you and break your regime and your plan for the first time all week. You wake up the next morning feeling like you just destroyed your past week's progress, wonder if it's even worth trying again. Is it even worth starting over? Noticing how common this cycle was in my own life and that of my clients, I really spent time wondering about how to address it. How could I dodge the minefield of Friday nights friends' birthday parties, social events, and business lunches. What special something, besides my habits or using sheer discipline, would actually allow me to do the stuff each day that I said I would? And that's when I stumbled upon a principle that virtually all of the world's most successful utilize on a daily basis, rituals. I already introduced you to the Million Dollar Master the Day Daily Ritual, which is a super easy way to hold yourself accountable, stay focused, inspired, and motivated every single day. But what actually happens when you're in the thick of things? What happens when it's a Monday afternoon and you're exhausted and you know you shouldn't eat that sugary snack, but you also know it's going to make you feel a heck of a lot better? It all starts with a book, or rather, an author. There are certain things I do if I sit down to write, he said. I have a glass of water or a cup of tea. There's a certain time I sit down from 8 o'clock to 8.30, somewhere within that half hour every morning, he explained. I have my vitamin pill and my music, sit in the same seat, and the papers are all arranged in the same places. The cumulative purpose of doing these things the same way every day seems to be a way of saying to the mind, you're going to be dreaming soon. Stephen King, as quoted in Haunted Heart, The Life and Times of Stephen King. This can seem a bit strange to some of us. I used to view creatives as these muse-inspired, fly-by-the-seat-of-their-pants, write-only-when-inspiration-strikes type folks. But the more I investigated the best of them, not just authors, 